This video will show you a fast and proven way to three or more papers in Q1 journals every single year while ultimately enjoying the process and working less. A big reason I see researchers struggle to write three or more papers every single year is that they either hope that time for writing papers will spontaneously appear on the schedule or when they do carve out the time to write, they're too overwhelmed to make any meaningful progress. This means that you write in fits and starts on random days at random times in random places, essentially leaving the most important outcome of your job as a researcher purely to chance and to random events. This leads to a painfully familiar cycle. You sit down at your desk each morning with the best intentions, promising yourself, today I'll make progress on my paper. But then emails flood in. You need to collect and analyze the data, read the literature. A colleague comes in asking you questions. And before you know it, it's 6 p.m. and your paper remains remains untouched. Again, this pattern repeats day after day, week after week, month after month, creating a constant undercurrent of guilt and anxiety that follows you everywhere. And when you do finally carve out the time to write, your mind feels scattered and overwhelmed. You stare at the blank document, the cursor mockingly blinking at you as precious minutes and hours tick by. The pressure mounts as you realize that you've just now wasted the only writing time you set aside for yourself that day or maybe even that that week. So what happens is that you spend six, nine, sometimes 12 months on one research paper, which significantly decreases your output, even though you work harder and longer. And the worst part is that you know full well that you're capable of truly brilliant research if only you could break out of this vicious cycle. That's why the first crucial step to three or more papers every single year while working less and actually enjoying the process is having a proven plan, both short and long term. First of all, you need to make a plan for the whole year in which you will specifically allocate time for writing these papers and you need to ensure that writing three or more papers fits into your other duties such as teaching or any admin work and everything else that you've got going on as a researcher. And the best way I found to do this is through an Excel sheet and a planner like this on which you would put the dates, the overall goal for the year, semesters, break down the overall goal into semester goals and then you specify what actions need to be taken in order to achieve those intermediate and long-term goals. And then you map everything out onto the specific months to really think how you're going to allocate time for writing papers, researching, collecting the data and everything else that you need to do on top of, for example, lecturing. So now that you have a more long-term plan and long-term time allocation, you also need to be very strategic about what happens every single day. Otherwise, I guarantee that days will pass by one after another, turning into weeks and then months without you making any sort of meaningful progress towards your papers. And the best way I've found of doing this is through a daily research planner just like this. The idea is that at the end of the previous day, you sit down and you plan in advance what's going to happen the next day, always keeping your goals in mind. So it has to be very intentional. And then you sit down and you specifically plan what goals you have, what tasks you're going to do tomorrow, and then you schedule everything onto your calendar and then you stick to it. And then at the end of the day, you evaluate your progress and what you can do better tomorrow and then you plan the next day. If you follow this, you will become way more productive than the vast majority of researchers in your field. But let's be honest, you can have the best plan in the world, be highly productive, but unless you're going to work on high impact research ideas, you'll only publish in mediocre journals and fail to make that contribution and impact that you want to make. Your papers will likely be rejected from top journals due to insufficient contribution to the field, which means you will waste endless months, if not years, on resubmissions, not to mention how demotivating all this will be. And most researchers, though, lack a proven process for coming up with high-impact research ideas. Most researchers wonder how this small pool of researchers comes up with those groundbreaking ideas that get them published in the best journals time and time again. That's why if you want to be among that top 10, 5, 1% of researchers in your field, you do need a systematic process for coming up with groundbreaking research ideas that will get you published in the best journal. And here's a breakdown of that process. First of all, the most 
obvious step is to look for research gaps. That is, lack of research on a particular topic or geographic area or so on. Lack of research consensus, meaning a lot of research has been conducted, but researchers disagree as to what's actually going on. Limitations of previous studies, problems with previous studies, in other words. And number four, unresolved practical or research problems. So what you need to be doing then is systematically writing these ideas as you review the literature and writing those research gaps down and keeping track of everything so that you can then derive creative ideas for new studies from that. And a very simple way of doing that that I found works really, really well is just having a simple table in Word where you can note down any research gaps that you find as you read literature on a regular basis. That said, research gaps are so obvious that all researchers in your field will be looking for them. So in order to really break apart from that crowd and find groundbreaking research ideas that other researchers in your field don't see, you need to look outside of your discipline. Let me give you an example to illustrate. Tu Yuyu is a scientist from China who discovered a drug for malaria that would save 200 million people and get her the Nobel Prize. How did she find that groundbreaking idea? Well, in 1960, over 240,000 compounds to cure malaria had already been tested and none of them had worked. So instead of following the crowd of research lemmings, Tu Yuyu did something different. She studied ancient Chinese medical texts going back thousands of years. And she found one text from 400 AD in which she came across a reference to wormwood, which at the time was used to treat intermittent fevers, which is a symptom of malaria. To cut the long story short, the active component from wormwood that she discovered, artemisinin, has since been used to save millions of lives and of course get to you the Nobel Prize. So what you also want to do, aside from the research gap, you need to look outside of your discipline. And number three, what you also need to do is use practical or professional experience in order to find research topics that other researchers don't see. This is how I published one of my papers in a journal that's number five out of more than 1,000 journals in my discipline, making it the top 0.5% of all journals, when Q1 journals are just the top 25%. How did that happen? Well, one day I was sat in a meeting of course book authors and editors I was working with on a course book for teaching English. And as I sat there, I suddenly realized that it was quite odd that everybody in the room, apart from one person, was white. And also 90% of the people in the room were native speakers from the UK or the US. And I started wondering, is it the case just for the course book that we were writing? Or is it the case for most course books for teaching English? I already knew from having explored the literature that nobody had worked on that idea previously. So I knew I had something novel there, but it wasn't reading the literature that gave that creative idea. It was actually the practical and professional experience that sparked that fire and allowed me to publish in one of the top, top journals in my field. But look, none of this is going to work unless you actually block time in your agenda for finding those high impact research topics. So pause this video right now and block a time once a week, once a month, whatever is feasible for you to explore the literature, to explore the literature outside of your field, explore practical professional experience in order to find high impact topics. And now look, you can have the best research ideas in the world, but unless you have a proven system that allows you to write papers efficiently, your papers might still either be rejected or you will spend months and months rewriting the papers constantly and getting stuck on every single paragraph. And the truth is that for most researchers, writing papers is a painful and time-consuming process. Blank word document mockingly stares at you for hours. You write and endlessly rewrite paragraphs without ever finishing finishing what you started. And I think the problem is that many researchers approach writing a new paper as if it was something completely new that had to be written completely from scratch. And while on the surface it might make sense, after all it is a different paper and a different research idea, if you analyze it in more depth it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Because most papers in most disciplines follow a proven predictable structure for each section of the paper. 
And in addition, since you're specializing in a very specific topic, in a very specific narrow area, that structure will be even more predictable and more repeatable. And the language you will use will also be quite predictable and quite repeatable. If you were to analyze your own past papers or papers in your discipline on one specific topic, you'd find that the researchers time and time again use very similar phrases to express their research ideas. And same goes for content, since many of your papers will be connected to one another and will focus on one specific research topics, the content that you will put, for example, in the introduction, in the literature review, even in the discussion or the conclusion will be very similar. So what you need to do is create a very detailed template for each section of your paper. Think of it as a blueprint an architect might create before building a house. While time consuming initially, it allows you to build a much better and much more beautiful house much faster in the end and avoid that house from collapsing as well. But more importantly, when building another similar house later on, that architect can take that initial blueprint, tweak it and then reuse most of it to build another equally beautiful house much more smoothly and much faster using much less effort. So put creating a blueprint like this into your calendar right now. Block an hour for this or two hours, however much time you think is needed, but make sure it's in your calendar because otherwise you will never create it. And while initially you need some time to do this, over the long term, if you're planning to do 10, 20, 30 papers over the next 10 years or so, this will be a fantastic investment of time right now. And if you want to speed up the process further, you can head to our free community. The link is in the description. When you go to the community, you will see our research paper blueprint that I've already developed for you right here at the top of the community. On top of that, you can head to the classroom and then in module one, you will find our proven process for structuring your paper, writing an introduction, but also for finding high impact research ideas. So now that you have a system for writing three or more papers every single year, let me show you how you can leverage your productivity even further by ethically using AI tools to write research papers. So watch this next video for 17 ways in which you can use AI tools ethically to write research papers for Q1 journals.